So this video is gonna be a little bit different. Depending on where you are in your sewing journey, you've probably come across sewing myths, either things that you believed that turned out to be false, or things people told you that you later found out was false. So we are going to explore some of those, but we are going to turn it into a bit of a game. A drinking game, as it were. Okay, a bit of a disclaimer before we get started. I do not promote harmful or unsafe practices on my channel, and while drinking games are typically associated with binge drinking and drunkenness, I am in my 30s and quite frankly, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> the alcohol content of my Raspberry Sparkle Teeny here is 5% uh, alcohol by volume, which means that this whole bottle is about one beer. <laughs> Having said that, this is a no peer pressure zone. The whole idea of a drinking game is to have fun and you don't need alcohol to have fun, right? So here's some ideas of what you can drink if you wanna play along and you don't drink alcohol or you just don't feel like drinking alcohol. So maybe you're trying to drink more water. Water's a good idea, especially if you think you're gonna really be bad at this and have to drink a lot. It'll help you drink more water. Soda or seltzer if you want a bit of a challenge. Uh, there was a challenge a little while ago on drinking a, a full bottle of Sprite without burping, and uh, that was kind of fun to watch because it's tough. The carbonation makes that hard. Chocolate milk or something similar is kind of a treat, something that you maybe don't get to drink a lot, because hey, then it'll be great if you really fail at this game. Win-win. Okay, the rules. One drink, one sip if you've ever believed the myth. Finish your drink if you still believe the myth. Because of this second rule, don't, don't fill up your glass too much. Use a small glass. Otherwise, we're gonna, we're gonna go through a lot really quickly. <laughs> okay, so let's look up some sewing myths and I'll let you know what website I'm getting it from so that you can follow along at home. So, we're just going to click the first link that we find, and it is wonderlabel.co.uk. I'll put it right here on the screen, and then I'll also put it in probably a pinned comment because you're more likely to find that. The description's in a real weird place now on YouTube. Sewing myths debunked. Number one, it's cheaper to sew it yourself. We didn't make it very far. I'm sorry, but a lot of the stuff that I want to make, it is cheaper to sew it myself. If you're thinking of just like a pair of pajama bottoms and you're getting your fabric straight from Joann's, then no, it's not cheaper to sew it yourself. But if you're looking at Renaissance gowns that somebody else is spending the money for the fabric and then spending their time making, it is cheaper to sew it yourself because you're not paying yourself for the time to make it. <sighs> okay. I get what they're saying though. When I started sewing, I thought it would be like a lot cheaper to sew things myself, because that's what they always did back in the day, right? And back in the day, I think it was cheaper. Nowadays, it's not gonna be cheaper than Walmart, and especially not cheaper than Shein, which should also let you know how they must be treating their workers that they're charging such low amounts if they also have to buy the supplies. Anyway, number two, hand sewing is inferior to machine sewing. <sighs> At least this one's only a sip, because I don't believe it anymore, but I did, and I think it was because I wasn't good at hand sewing, so I didn't think that my stitches were as good as a machine. And I was probably right, it definitely didn't look as good. You can't sew stretch fabrics without a serger or overlock machine. Oh, I actually never heard this one, so I'm good. I, I have been sewing stretch fabrics with my machine before I, I got the serger and used a zigzag stitch. All sewing projects are the same. 
Okay, I, I don't believe this one either. I, I've never heard this one either, I don't think. Definitely, there are easy sewing projects and difficult sewing projects. You can always spot a homemade sewing project. Yeah. Yeah. I guess because there was a time where I saw people's homemade sewing projects and they were bad. But the people who are really good at sewing don't often go around and like, hey, look at this shirt I made. Because they've been doing it for a while and they're not as proud of themselves as someone who's brand new at it. You need to master every technique. I never thought this, and there's certain techniques that I'm probably never going to try. I might try embroidery, but I don't think it's ever going to be something I do. I don't know, who knows, but I'm certainly not going to master everything. Let's just get to a point where I can like complete a garment and have it fit me properly, and then then we'll, we'll consider it mastery. Pinning is the best way to get even perfectly aligned seams. I, I, I don't know if I ever thought it was the best way. Always felt it was the proper way. If you really need to make sure something fits or goes together right, uh, basting it together is a really good way because then you don't have the, the kind of pinch that pins make and you don't have to worry about pulling them out as you go. They also make these clips that are really good, uh, especially if you have like slippery fabric. And I saw one person that used tape, which looks like it works really well but it also looks really wasteful, so kind of on the fence about that. I would say basting probably is the 100% the best. It just takes a lot longer than just pinning it. Always press each seam as you go. What do you mean this is a myth? I preach this. Some materials should never be pressed with an iron. <laughs> Velvet, for example, would be utterly ruined. Now, wait a minute, there's ways to press velvet, you just have to do it a certain way. They have like, uh, the, like, what, it's like a bed of nails that you put. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maybe you don't, but I'll, I'll put a picture. It's, that's what it reminds me of, a bed of nails, and you put it on so that it doesn't, I get what they're saying, you don't press the, the top part, like the pile part of velvet, because if you do, you never get it to fluff back up the same way. But there's ways to press every type of fabric. I don't know if I agree with that. I still think you should press your seams as you go. You can't sew just anything at home. I mean, you, you don't always get the same quality because there's certain, there's certain machines that are used in industrial settings that we don't often have in our homes. But uh, yeah, I think you can pretty much sew anything at home. Okay, that was all of them. Let's try another site. This is stevessewandvac.com. Seven common myths about sewing debunked. Myth one, sewing is too expensive. Ha! Ha! That's the opposite of the other one. Sewers have special talents. Ah, this is not one that I thought. My dog's chewing his bone, sorry if that's distracting. When I first started sewing, I thought it was something that I'd be able to pick up really easily and well, that's true, it still takes a lot of practice to get good at it, just like anything else. I, I feel like I'm the opposite there. I thought sewing would be a lot easier than it is. Oh, myth number three, sewing is too hard. So yeah, it's not hard. But like I said, it does take practice to get good at it. Uh, myth number four, sewing takes too much time. Cheers. <laughs> It does though. It takes so much time. It says even though some sewing projects involve hours of work, it doesn't mean that you have to do everything at once. Okay, but you still have to spend a significant amount of time doing it, so. Uh, sewing projects look tacky and homemade. That was on the other one, so we'll skip it. If you know how to sew, you can sew anything. Uh, that definitely was something, like I said, I thought before. And that's definitely something that people think about me. Uh, I tell them I sew, say I sewed this skirt. Even though it seems obvious that a skirt is a really easy thing to make, people will see that I sewed a skirt and think that I can sew anything. I did a video where I said 10 movie costumes that I wanted to make. The ones that my friends and family said to me, oh, you should make this one next, were all the super difficult ones. It takes practice, I have to get better with precision till we get to that point. 
Myth number seven, you must want to sew all the time. As somebody who started over 10 years ago and is still considered a beginner because I took like three years off, it's, it's a commitment and a lot of times when you have a hobby it's tough to commit a lot of time to it. We all kind of want to have a free and open schedule and when you have a project going that is a commitment, it's fun, but it's also like a ball and chain. Double-edged sword, I guess. Okay, we'll, we'll do one more site. This is Sewing to the Moon. And it's seven sewing myths busted. Number one, sewing is for old ladies. When I was young, I thought this. And by young, I mean like under 12. That didn't stop me from wanting to sew and it didn't stop me from crochet either, but still something that I thought. I just thought I was cool because I did something that old ladies did. Uh, sewing is cheap. That That's some conflicting things here. You know, so cheap, expensive, cheap. Only talented people can sew. That was when we came across. It's an inexpensive hobby. Uh, that kind of goes along with the cheap thing, but we'll we'll take a drink to it. I, it's it's close, so I'm not gonna finish my drink, but I do still believe that it all comes down to how much do you want to spend. If you have the money to get a sewing machine, expensive fabric, threads you know, a French curve seam set, a cutting mat, a rotary cutter, if you have the money for that, it can get expensive, but I'm pretty sure my sewing machine cost my mom less than 50 bucks when she got it for me, and I've had it for over 10 years. It's really easy to find a cheap sewing machine, especially secondhand. Sewing machines are relatively simple machines, so if you get an old one, you can probably get it working pretty easily. And even if you don't use a sewing machine, you can get thread and needles from the dollar store. So yeah, and most of my fabric I get from the thrift store, so I'm gonna say yeah, it can be an, an expensive hobby, and it can be an expensive hobby. It all has to do with what you want to spend on it and what you have available to spend on it. Handmade looks homemade. Came across that before. If you sew, you need to sell. I, I haven't thought about that, <laughs> but, uh, hmm. Quilting and sewing are the same. Okay, that's one I can drink to because, while I don't believe that now, that I know a little bit more about quilting and sewing, I did believe that. I also thought that tailoring and sewing were the same. If you knew how to sew something, then you also knew how to tailor something, and if you knew how to tailor something, you also knew how to sew something. When I was talking to people who sew, I remember saying, oh hey, you sew, don't you? Uh, would you be interested in helping me, to, you know, with this dress? And they're like, oh no, no, I only do like alterations and things. They, they're a tailor. So there are differences in the types of sewing, quilting, sewing, tailoring. You can be really good at one and not be able to do the others. So yeah, definitely different. Those are all those. And I think that is enough for this video. I hope you had fun. If you are interested in aesthetic sewing content, please subscribe to this channel. Give this video a like if you had fun and enjoyed yourself, and comment down below on what myth maybe surprised you, or maybe one myth that you know of that you found out was not true. For now, I'm gonna finish this bottle. Until next time, cheers.